so discouraged that you thought about packing it in you know, at some point in your development? Because obviously, you know, there weren't very many hockey players that are as big as you are. Well, it was, it was, it was very tough, that's for sure. Uh, you know, growing up, you start to play hockey for fun. Right. Uh, you, you're basically doing it to, to kill some time, and, and obviously parents like to see their kids to do some, something besides just sitting home and playing video games or etc. But, but to, to me, it was, it, was, it was something that I really find something in hockey that I, I, I absolutely loved. I, I loved to be on the ice when, when there's 95 degrees outside and, and be, be cold and, and the speed of the game and scoring goals in, in, in the nets. And uh, I loved everything about it. And uh, uh, as, a, as a kid, you play for fun. And, and then it gets to the point where only, only the better ones get, you choose to choose to uh, get to the to the next levels. Uh, in in my case, it was it was a little bit harder because you know when they when they saw somebody who is really tall and trying to play hockey, they said, you know, it's nice that you're playing hockey, but now you should probably you know switch sports. You should probably quit, you know, because nobody is that big and playing hockey. So you know, it was all these discouragements and and. It was something about it that it kept motivating me, mm -hmm. and I got cut by every, every possible team, every junior team, and, and coaches were telling me I shouldn't play hockey. And there were only two people I can think of who really made a difference. It was a scout, John, uh, Janko Gaidoshik, from he's scouting for New York Rangers, and uh, coach uh, Jan Novotny, who who were my coach in junior, triple E, B, whatever that was, and. They, they they never stopped believing me and and they were kept telling me and obviously i can't forget my dad and my whole family uh, we were big support and they were you know telling me to to keep going keep working hard and good things happen and i you know that's all i did i, I was working extremely hard and to get where i where i am today and and i never stopped doing that uh, it's a it's a main and first priority for me to to work really hard and and be the hardest worker and uh, it's a great, great feeling. Kind of look at the look at the names on the trophy. I mean, from from Harvey to Orr to <laughs> yeah. Coffee to Bork to Lidstrom, there hasn't been a lot of names on it. It's a trophy that's yeah. dominated by yeah. the very best in that position. Mm -hmm. Have you taken stock and um, you having your name with that group now? Yeah, uh, it's what a group. I mean, like I said, I'm I'm gonna be still recovering from this uh, probably couple, next couple of days because because it's uh, such an honor. I mean, all these. Names you mentioned are just a uh, huge, uh, huge uh, icons, and they did so much for for hockey, and and they present everything uh, that, that the game is supposed to pre uh, represent. And uh, I, I don't know what to say. I'm just so happy, and for myself and for everybody who helped me. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's always great feeling to to prove people wrong. Uh, so yeah, happy. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, people are discouraging you from continuing playing hockey and everything. Uh, did you ever personally consider, you know, basketball or any other kind of sport? Well, I, growing up, you as a kid, you playing all, all the other sports like, just like any other kid. So uh, I'm not gonna lie. I, yeah, I, yeah, I play basketball. I play tennis. I play soccer. It was all part of, you know, kids having fun. And when people were telling me that, you know, you shouldn't play hockey. I, I, I just never quit. I, I, I was close. Uh, obviously, you know, when you're hearing that, you're getting cut by so, so many, you know, teams, and yeah, you're getting close. But there is always a, that slight little chance that can make a difference, and, and and you know, but also these these lucky breaks, they, they do happen for those that that deserve them. Uh, so when you do work hard, and eventually you're gonna get a break. Uh, why did they cut you? I mean, did they, did they think you wasn't a good enough skate? Or? Yeah, I mean, all, 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 all that combined. I mean, if you're really tall and they, 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 they for some reason, think that they, you know, that you shouldn't play hockey, you know, it's tough. And obviously, my coordination wasn't there because, you, you know, I, all these other kids stopped growing and I, I kept growing. So, you know, the body, for somebody who is, you know, 6'1", 6'2", don't need or doesn't need as much adjustments as somebody who's 6'4 and, and growing, you know, 
inch to a, a year. Uh, you know, your body needs some time to to fill in, to to feel comfortable and and to react. You know, for 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 that sport. And obviously, coaches back home didn't have patience for that. And and but it's 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 different now because you know any anybody can play any sport. I I do believe that. You know. Uh, you can be the smallest guy and you can play basketball. You can be the tallest guy and you can still play hockey or any other sport. So it's just a matter of, uh, you know, believing yourself and never give up and work hard. At which point did you start feeling comfortable with your own body? I think, you know, obviously when you stop growing and I was about, you know, at age 18, 19, I stopped growing and that's when I was already in here in North America and playing in Prince George uh, Western Hockey League. and. Uh, you know, that's that's when you start to fill in uh, the muscles, and and you you you're getting used to you know smaller ice, uh, getting used to uh, the system, the hockey over here, the way it's played, and uh, you know the culture and all that stuff. And uh, you know, as, as as the years went on, you start to feeling more comfortable and comfortable. And also, you know, the roles you have on a team. Uh, you know, uh, when I came in the league, obviously I tried to keep it as simple as possible and you not know, to make uh, any mistakes. And uh, at that point, you're on the edge, you know, to be uh, uh, in the NHL or in the farm. So you you don't take any risk. You you, you try to really uh, make sure that you 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 don't make mistakes and keep it simple and and, and you know work hard and. Do the extra stuff, uh, but as, as as you break in and you establish yourself, then you 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 know. For me, it was it was kind of a lucky break again. You know, we got two top two three defensemen got hurt, and and um, I was started to play against top lines, and and you know, I I, I took it personally and as, as a big challenge, and uh, I was so motivated and I was so excited that uh, you know I I, I didn't want to let it go and. Since then, I was just adding to my game every year, and I try to get better every year. Uh, there's, there's, there's no, uh, there's no uh, player um, in the world that is perfect. You know, it's we all need to get better, and and I'm, I'm always trying to get better in different aspects of the game. So. Yeah. Uh, well. Mike is just so uh, so talented, and he um, he's got so much uh, um, danger weapon in his game that you know he can score goals like 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 anybody in the league. I mean, he, he can he can pick a corner and, and and he can hit it just just in a you know heartbeat before goalies realize that uh, the puck, puck is behind him. And obviously. He, he's a strong, strong guy. I mean, he, he he doesn't play, you know, a really physical game, but but he when he does hit you, you can feel it. And um, um, obviously, in, in, in he's a, one of the biggest reasons in Washington that uh, uh, they're improving every year uh, where they are. You know, and uh, now Nick, we can be here all night. Uh, we can be here all night long. Uh, uh, I said that he's uh, he's still, you know. Uh, uh, the best defenseman in a in a hockey, he 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 proved it, and uh, I mean he's been there ten years. He's so consistent, and he's so smart. His positioning, um, the way he plays the game, and uh, you know he's just uh, unbelievable. Uh, speaking about other players, um, have you heard about Victor Hedman? V Victor Hedman. Hedman, Swedish guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I heard him. Uh, he's often being labeled as the Swedish answer to Sam Shar. He's not quite as tall as you. Yeah, are. yeah. Well, same as the Shell Samuelson, right? Yeah. He's a he's, he was a big tall guy. He was like six seven, six eight. And thanks, Claude. Appreciate. It. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, those are those are uh, obviously when I was growing up, I I heard those names. So um, you know, I was looking up to those. So.